Welcome back friends, boys and girls. Uh, this is part two in our welder cap, biker cap series, how to make for the beginner, uh, keeping the beginner in mind. I've, uh, I've uploaded part one of this series and if you haven't watched that, I encourage you to go check that out. The, uh, the video will be floating around somewhere here that you can click on. Or, you know, just go check out my channel and find part one, Making a Welder Cap for the Beginner. And we talked about how we laid our fabric out. We put an iron to it. We cut out our pieces here from our pattern uh, this is a six panel hat with a bill and I have a front middle and back uh, that and that's how we we've achieved our shapes here our pieces that we cut out with our scissors uh, I can get this pattern to you uh, I had a subscriber nice lady friend of mine uh, her and her husband was nice enough to uh, to help me figure out a way to email this uh, exact pattern to you and you can print it out and uh, they even included a uh, a scale on on the piece of paper that you will print to check and make sure that this is the correct size so what an excellent idea uh, uh, thank you uh, Miss M you know who you are and your husband oh that just made my whole day that you helped me out with that and saved me a lot of stamps and copy paper and, and ink cartridges so <clears throat> Thank you from Florida. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. Anyway, uh, thanks to them. Now I can, uh, if you want this pattern to to try this to make one, I can email it to you now. And there's actually five pieces. This is the whole pattern. It's five. It'll be five sheets of paper. Uh, for you to print this out and we're going to talk about each each piece uh, but to move forward from part one we cut a front middle and back um, from one type of material and this let's say this might be uh, green, you know, maybe you don't have this particular um, You know scheme or, or theme You just you just need two two separate uh, You don't you don't have to have two different Themes you can you can make an, a total green hat which which I did in my first uh, welder cap video series it was it was all green but anyway to what I'm getting at is you got uh, with with the right sides out fully on every piece we got a a back on our cherry and frog we got a middle on our cherry and frog and we got a front on our cherry and frog so a, a, how I like to stack these is I leave my my back piece on the bottom and I'll lay the middle and I'll lay the front and I'll get these out of the way same thing here there's my back middle and front and I'll move these so we can talk about our bill uh, this part of the pattern uh, we cut the fabric um, we were going to cut it exact 
exact uh, size of the, the cardboard template, but I decided for this hat, I'm going to leave it uh, a little large, a little long. No problem. Now our stiffener that we talked about in part one uh, needs to be smaller than the cardboard uh, pattern because it has to squeeze inside of these two eventually. You'll see that. So the stiffener is smaller than the template and the fabric needs to be either exact or slightly larger than the pattern. So next I'll lay these uh, wrong sides out. In this case I have a uh, a frog and a cherry and I'll pin those in place just so nothing moves and slides around because we're getting ready to sew us our first stitch line out here on this perimeter in preparation for uh, installing this stiffener so there's that that's the uh, wrong sides out on our material and that's how I always start with my machine is with the bill now I'm gonna have to uh, adjust my camera and uh, reposition my camera and we'll we're gonna talk further here in just a moment alrighty hopefully this is gonna give y'all a pretty good view of, of what's going on here I got my bill piece that I've pinned together, wrong sides out, one frog, one cherry, and I'm going to run a, a stitch along this perimeter out here. So looking at the right, the right hand edge of my foot here, <clears throat> my fabric's going to, that's where it's going to run, it's right there on the right side of that foot that's where I'm going to hold my my fabric so I'll start it right there and get it pressed in lay my foot down and now you see my needle I'm going to move it over to the right with the little push button here on my machine as to where the needle uh, my stitch line is going to be about less than a quarter of an inch from this edge it'll probably be about a quarter and we're going to start sewing and as I go I'm going to hold this fabric edge on that foot edge <clears throat> I'm going to let it ride right through here. Even though it's curved, I'm going to work it and we're going to we're going to get it done. Here we go. Kind of have to move your, your hands around, move the fabric around to keep the edge of the fabric on the edge of the foot. So now we got that seam done around that perimeter, around that outside there, all the way. And that's a quarter inch of seam allowance out here. That's how much material is left on the outside of that stitch. 
I would never go any less than a quarter in my opinion because this uh, portion of the hat uh, you'll find will wear out the quickest and if you if you leave less than a quarter inch of uh, material out here it's going to come apart even faster during wear and tear so that's a quarter inch now I'm going to try to keep my camera in about the same spot and show you <clears throat> about this stiffener that we got So once again, it is smaller than our fabric here, and it'll. This is where it's going to live, right here. Okay, so we're we're staying away from the seam line just a little bit right there, or from the from our stitch. Okay, all the way. We can't have it, we can't put it there because as we turn these right sides out, it'll interfere with the, with the shape. So we have it inside that stitch line. And we're going to go ahead and, and use these same pins that I have here. And only on, on the, this top side, the cherry side, We're going to pin that uh, stiffener in place onto the cherry there. And right here too. I'm going to pin that, that stiffener onto that piece of cherry. Now then. We got our uh, stiffener pinned in place where it's going to live. We got our stitch line done around the perimeter here. It's time to turn these right sides out. Giving everything a little gentle tug there and a little pressing and pushing. Get that seam established and there's our little stiffener living in there and we'll we'll gather this uh, what's left of the seam there on on one side of the uh, stiffener take you a minute sometimes pick at it get it all uh, laying on the same side of our stiffener there it might take you a few minutes that's all right this is fun but it's got to be there it's got to be on this side Almost. There we go. There we go. Now See, now it'll lay good and flat because all that excess fabric is on the same side of the stiffener here. Happens to be on the frog side uh, because we, we got our, our cherry side kind of hemmed up here, pinned up. But now that, uh, that this is in place, 
you might want to take your iron and run across here you know uh, I just give it a little press I had ironed this these pieces before we started now I'm gonna take my pins out and set them aside because I'm getting ready to bring back in the, the machine and, and uh, we're going to put some more stitches in it to keep it in shape to help hold its form and you wouldn't have to do this but this is what I like to do <clears throat> my machine has some uh, decorative uh, stitch options here and I like number 15 here uh, I like that pattern right here so I'm gonna use that so I'll go up here to my my little keyboard <clears throat> And I'll hit uh, 15. And then to make it a little wider and a little longer, I'll adjust that. And that's something you'll play around with with your machine uh, to get it how you like it. But this is, uh, I have that memorized because that's, that looks good to me and we're going to show you here I got some red thread I got red on the top and the yellow as my bobbin so I think the yellow would uh, come through better on the on the cherry here so we're going to turn it like this where the red will be on the frog and once again the edge of my fabric is going to ride <clears throat> on this right hand edge of my foot all the way around once again and this whole time I've been talking I've had my foot sitting on the foot pedal which is not recommended but uh, I'm going to back that up a little bit and now I've got my, my, my fancy little stitch uh, programmed in. I'll just start running. And I'll back it up a few. And we'll run this around this perimeter here. Now we got our pretty red decorative stitch there going all the way and on this side it's yellow same same effect and that's going to assure that that stiffener stays in place out here on this edge during your wear and tear during your laundry cycles now next thing I'd like to do what I always do is I'll come back through 
and I'll run me one more straight stitch line out through here uh, to to help keep to help firm up the the mid section of the bill here all right so we're gonna do that and and this time <clears throat> as a guide I'm gonna use this left hand side of this decorative stitch holding on holding that on the right side of my foot here as I go through just as a guide hope you can see that I'll zoom that in a little bit and here we go oh and I forgot I made an error I gotta turn this back to my straight stitch here So I got to go back to zero. All right, that's my default setting. That's my out of the box straight stitch setting there on my machine. Okay, no harm done there because these ends of the uh, this bill will actually be tucked inside of uh, the hat itself. So anyhow, here we go with our, we're going to back up and we're going to run our straight stitch now. then so now we got a pretty little decorative stitch out here on the on the end and we just got a straight stitch running pretty close to it that's gonna keep this bill this brim it's gonna help it keep its shape all right you could you can run you one more even you know, or, or five more. You can do whatever you want. I'm just uh, giving you some idea here. So now, there's our, there's our bill. There's our stiffener sewn in. Everything's nice and flat. And uh, looks looks good. So let, we're gonna move on now. Let's see what we're gonna do next. Um, I'm gonna set this bill aside and let's work on the the actual shape of the head uh, parts our front middle and back I need to reposition everything and I'll be back with you in just a minute now then here are our pieces it happens to be the frog uh, pattern that we're going to start with front middle and back and when we look at this person here's what we're thinking about is this side of the head the left side of the head all right the front out here this will be the front piece the middle and the back just how we have it laid out here that's how we start is thinking about the left side of the head front middle and back <clears throat> as you would read left to right okay I'm gonna take our pattern away because that was for demonstration so 
uh, these two edges have to be together these two edges have to be together that's where we'll start so how do we do that uh, just like this I'm ignoring this underside this second piece we're ignoring that right now so I've laid the middle over the middle part over the front part and if you like pin her up keeping those edges uh, perfect there's where that pattern comes in so there's that's how we're gonna start uh, we're gonna stitch 3 8 seam allowance down through here on this edge that's our starting point and uh, I always uh, start with the butt end of my cap here the wider end going into my machine and I'm going to try to Try to do this to where I can to show you every single step uh, as I do it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to mention one more time that it, throughout this process, my fabric edge is going to ride on this uh, right hand side of my foot right here as you can see that's where for the most part that's uh that's how i run everything through my machine you know thinking about the right side of that foot there so I'm going to come out here and I'm going to pinch this tail end, this, this narrow end out here, and I'm going to hold it with my left hand. I'm not going to let go. We got it pinned. So nothing's going to move around. Now we can remove that pin. And we got our straight stitch programmed in. Now, let's talk about the size of your hat. I told you we were going to make a seven and a half. It's going to be about, it's, it's actually a seven and uh, nine sixteenths if you, if you want to get technical about it. It's, uh, it's in between a seven and a half and a seven and five eighths, according to my research. Uh, my needle at its default position you know factory set let's see let me get my ruler here and I'll tell you my needle as a as a factory or as a default position That's three eighths of an inch away from the from this edge of the foot right here. So from the edge of the foot where my fabric I'm three eighths of an inch away from that edge with my needle as I turn the machine on. So I don't have to move my needle. And that's that's what we're gonna keep with is a 3 8 seam allowance for this size of a hat 7 and a half, 7 and 5 eighths. if you wanted a larger hat 
which is something you're going to have to play around with and keep records of your uh, settings. If you move the needle closer to the edge of the fabric, every time you run one of these pair in here, you're going to have a larger circumference on the, on the final hat, understandably. The more you move it closer to the edge, the you know, the wider or the, the larger the hat size. Now you can't move the needle any more to the left than it is right now. However, you see our grid lines here. You see these uh, indicator lines. You could hold your fabric out here, for example, and have a much smaller hat. If you did every every one of these pieces through here, like we're going to do, you know, imagine if you went out through here, of course you would be trimming fabric then after you're done, but you would have a tiny, tiny hat. So that's one example of how to to get a larger or smaller hat from your default position on your machine move your fabric or move your needle however don't don't get any closer to this edge than a quarter inch or you're going to have stuff coming apart in the wash if if you need a hat that's uh that's that large adjust your pattern pieces to be wider at the base you know customize your your pattern to where you know instead of what do we got here instead of four and three eighths make it five inches wide down here and you know re remake your, your own pattern to make a larger hat uh, if I move my needle to a quarter inch of this edge and you can get a seven and three quarter seven and seven eighths size of a hat which is quite large you, you won't have many people asking for a hat that large and it, you know you can't you can't move it any closer to <coughs> excuse me to the edge so your pattern has to be larger so that's just something to think about as far as your sizing for our exercise we're keeping the default machine setting which is 3 8 seam allowance I'm keeping that fabric on the right edge of that foot module through every one of these pieces here and that's going to give us our seven and a half seven and five eighths and I, I keep saying the two because it's actually in between the two once this is washed and dried and this is a straight stitch uh, once again I'm pinching this narrow end out here the, the top the part of the, that would be the crown and I'm not going to let go and I'm going to I'm going to make sure that these edges of fabric are perfect down through here as we go. So here we go.
Okay, let's see what we got here now. So here's our front, here's our middle, there's our back waiting on us. So we join those two. Right? <clears throat> Pretty cool. And once again, we're ignoring what's underneath everything here. Now we've got to attach the back to the middle. Now how do we do that? We'll just fold this right over there. Just like that. We're going to leave these laying right here. We're going to line up our edges. And we're going to pin it. You'll get to where you don't even pin it anymore, but I'm showing the beginner here. You'll get to where you just throw them in there and you don't even think about it. You don't even think about which side of the head and what we're doing and how it goes together. It'll become so simple that uh, it'll just come natural. And that's how you'll you'll get this hat done in 45 minutes. You know, after you do several. Now, we want to make sure as we pin this that we didn't interfere with this seam that we already created here. So, uh, everything's good. This is free and clear out here. Alright, so, once again, <clears throat> front, middle, back. Uh, I want to start, I want to throw the butt end of, of my fabric into my machine. So, let me move you around again. So you can see everything. <clears throat> and I'll take that pin out now. Because I'm going to have my presser foot holding everything in place there. There's my edge of my fabric on the edge of my foot. And I'm going to grip this crowned end out here, this narrow end, and hold it and not let go. And keep these edges perfectly in tune, in line, together. And here we go again. I'm going to pause and take my pen out and I'll keep going to the end. Now just that quick Just that quick, we've got our uh, left side of our head put together for the frogs. Remember, we still got the cherries to do. But uh, there, here's your front, middle, and back. Left side of the head complete on your frogs. And that's the three eighths seam allowance right here all all the way through all these pieces will be the same seam allowance okay so what I'll do is I won't flip this over I'm just going to lay it as it is right here out of my way okay now let's talk about these pieces which are wrong sides up that's that's how we want them. We didn't move them. We didn't we didn't do anything. 
Now we want to talk about the right side of the head. The left side is complete. So now the front, let me get my pointer. The front comes first, then the middle, then the back. So it's not like we're reading, we're reading backwards. So remembering that, now we've got to move our front over here. And move our back over here. So now, our front is here, our middle is in the center, and our back is over here to the left because this is the side of the head we're concentrating on right now for this exercise. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and at this point, we'll finally turn things over. You don't have to, but that's been in my regimen since I started, and that's just how I do. So we've got to join these two edges, and we've got to join these two edges. How do we do that? Here we go again. Flip, flip. And I know I want to shoot that butt end in the machine first, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it this way. At this point, you can flip everything around and get it oriented how you like. We'll continue to pin it for the beginner. We're thinking about the beginner in this, in this episode, in this series. Uh... That way nothing moves, slides around and moves around as we work. Okay. So here's the seam we're working on. This this seam we're ignoring, or this this edge out here, <clears throat> we're ignoring. Okay, we're we're working on this portion. And you see how you got to move stuff around a little bit. So, here we go into our machine again, and we're going to reposition. So you can see every step. I'm going to go ahead and, and take that pin out myself. You can leave it in until your presser foot's down, but I wouldn't run my needle across any uh, pin my opinion once again our pressure foot is down edge of the fabric edge of the foot I'm pinching this out here keeping those edges together and we go on again and take that pin out. So, let's see what we got so far. Now we got our, our front attached to the middle. Now we got to attach our back to the middle. So, we're just going to fold this right over here like this. And here's the seam we're working on so we can move it and flip it and do whatever because I know I'm going to send the butt end 
into that machine first I'm, we're not going to get lost on anything because we're holding that all together here we can move it and flip it I'll pin it up so it doesn't move and then we'll check everything that's not perfect there now that's that's perfect so I'll move that pin and I'll I'll set this in there <clears throat> I'll set my foot down again and I'll make sure that this whatever we did before out here is out of the way it's folded over to the left and I'm gonna pinch that out here and hold it I'm gonna check these constantly these edges looking good here we go I'll take that pin out guess what now we've got the right side of our head put together there's our front middle and back okay this this help you out a little bit if you think about it that way with the with the little drawing or, the, or nothing more than an L or an R on a piece of paper to help you keep track now you remember a while ago when we did this left side of the head I just moved it out of the way I didn't flip it and turn it over that's gonna stay there 